personal finance excel practice problem even investment stock portfolio calculation prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance here we are in our excel worksheet if you don't have access to it that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet but if you do have access three tabs down below example practice blank example answer key let's look at it now information on the left calculations on the right we are imagining we're going to be putting a fixed amount in in standard intervals in this case on a yearly basis into stocks now note as we go through this process you can think of a similar process as if you are investing instead of on a yearly basis on a possibly a pay period by pay period basis which might be a bi-weekly weekly semi-monthly monthly and then you have a fixed amount that you're going to be investing possibly in that case in something like etfs or mutual funds and then the questions we want to answer is well what's the calculation of the total investment we would have in this case after four time frames or four periods four years in this case and what's the total number of shares that we might have at the end of that time which will differ not as easy of a calculation as we might think at first glance because clearly even though we're putting the same amount in every year the price is going to change each year so then we're going to also take a look at what the average cost per share is the second tab here is the practice tab we'll have some pre-formatted cells so you can work the practice problem without as much excel formatting the third tab we're going to work on the excel formatting in the blank tab if you don't have any of this worksheet you can open up a new worksheet i would then start by formatting the worksheet i would do that by selecting the entire worksheet possibly with the triangle right clicking on the selected area format the cells i'll usually start with the accounting or currency brackets and red for the negative numbers no dollar sign no decimal and then i'm not going to hit okay because we already have this i'm going to say x out then enter your data on the left hand side just enter the data make a skinny c column and then we're good to go okay so the information on the left we've got the investment uh, in company stock so we're going to imagine we're investing in one company stock but remember you could expand this to investing in say etfs which are which are basically going to help you to diversify over over a larger portfolio for example in in that fashion but we're going to say the stock and we're going to invest seven thousand each period so we can imagine basically at the end of each year let's say we're going to invest seven thousand remember that you could apply the same strategy this is a common strategy for people to apply when investing say for retirement in that they might just take some money out of their paycheck whenever they get paid that might happen more likely on a weekly basis semi uh weekly semi-monthly bi-weekly and you have a similar kind of, of process or similar kind of thing that will be happening with that kind of investment strategy. So note that uh, in the first year, we're going to say that we have the cost of the stock is at $84, $86. So, and then uh, in year two, it's going to go down. So now it goes down to 74. And then in year three, X6 in this case, it's going to go to 57 and X7 to 77. So when we're putting the same amount of money in, we're going to be buying at the peaks and troughs. And remember that when you're when you're thinking about the investment strategy in the short term, you're going to have these peaks and troughs and you would like to be buying at the bottom because we'd like to buy low, sell high. But in the long run, we would hope that there's an upward trend. And so so if we're long term investing, a, a strategy might be that we're just going to put money in every period, possibly whenever we get paid and and let it let it ride from there. I'm not going to try to guess the short term peaks and troughs would be one common strategy to to use for individual investors on a long term time horizon. But let's see what the impact of this would be. So let's see what would be our total investment after the four periods. We've got the total investment and let's make this column a little bit wider and let's make the, this black and white up top so we're going to go to the home tab font group make this with a bucket let's make that black and the lettering white for our header and then we're going to say that we have the investment per year investment per year it hasn't it's not going to change each year it's just going to be seven thousand each year that we're going to put in we can imagine we put it in at the end of each year so we're going to say the years then that we're covering here are four years that we're thinking about 
and that and that's going to give us a total investment after four years which will be equal to of course seven thousand times four so after four years we will have put in twenty eight thousand would be the idea i'm going to make this blue and bordered up top home tab font group brackets let's make some borders and let's go to the font group bucket drop down there's the blue i usually use i'll go to more colors if you don't have it it's in the standard color wheel there's the blue right there so there we have it so now we're going to think about the number uh, of shares that we're going to have let's make a skinny f column so i'm going to put my cursor in the c here and make a paintbrush it home tab paintbrush so we can just brush the f column Boom, one stroke, one brush stroke down, and the whole thing's paint brushed. So now we got the number of shares. And so I'll, I'll uh, start with, I'll have the year, let's put the headers here, years, investment, and then the price, and then the shares are gonna be our headers. Let's make the whole thing black and white. Let's choose the whole thing here. Go to the home tab, font group, and make it black and white. And then down on the, these headers, let's center those ones. So let's go to the alignment and center those. This one needs to be a little wider. I'm just gonna double click on the H to do that. This one can be a little smaller, I think, the years. And we'll just pick up the years, X4, X5, X6, X7. So this equals the, this, I'm gonna copy it down, put in my cursor on the fill handle, copy it down. And so there we have it. So that looks good. The investment uh, that we're gonna put in each year is gonna be equal to 7,000, which is this number. I could select F4 on the keyboard, making it absolute dollar sign before the B and the two. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute one works so that I can simply double click on it and it'll copy it down. Uh, you can also, oftentimes I'll just, I'll just delete these and say there's the first one here's equal the one above it you can also use spill funk but i'm just going to do it this way i'm going to copy those down so that's another way you can commonly uh, enter that and then we're going to enter the price so the price this is what changes each each time frame right so we started off in x4 at 86 and then the price if i copy that down let's just double click it goes to to 74 and then to 50 58 and then to uh, 77 is the fluctuations within the price. So if I if I think about how many shares we're purchasing, even though the investments stay the same, we're investing, we're buying a different number of shares each time. So I could say, okay, let's take the 7,000 divided by the 86. That would give us 81. If there was a fraction, if we can get a fraction, it would be 81.40 shares. And if I do that all the way down, this is going to be this divided by the 74. We're putting 7,000 divided by 57. And this equals 7,000 divided by 77. We could, of course, copy that down as well. We can delete these, for example, and just double click on the fill handle to do those calculations. So even though I'm putting in the same 7,000, I only got uh, 81 shares, around 81 shares in uh, x4 because the price was higher and then the price actually went down which isn't good for our investment so notice you know there's pros and cons to the to when we look at our investment strategy we would like of course the investment to go up the current shares that we have the 81 shares we would like them to go up we lost money if the, they went down but now that might be a time for us to buy right because now at the end of the second year we were buying at a lower price because the stock market went down. So we're putting in the same 7,000, but now the price is 74. So we get to buy more shares. So notice how the shares are being differentiated, even though the, the amount we're putting in is the same. And instead of us trying to pick when the, when the floor is, we just keep putting money in every period. In this case, every year, you might be doing it same kind of concept every week when you get paid or every every two weeks and then it and then it went down further uh to 57 so now you got 7,000, and we invested again right because we want to we're now we're investing into the to it going down we got a lot more shares and then it goes back up to so 7,000 goes back up to 77 so we bought the the 90 shares 91 about so the total 
number of shares that we got is going to be equal to the sum of the of these items i'm going to say let's go up top and add some decimals so obviously especially if you think about this on a week by week basis you might say well man if i really knew what i was doing i wouldn't have bought here and if and i would have waited to the following week until it got down to here and then i would have purchased all these shares at seven thousand i would have purchased uh, using you know these three months uh, buying them all at 57 buying them at, at the floor right and then when it goes back up then i don't buy when it goes back up right i buy at the dips that's what i'd like to do however of course no one knows when the dips are and if you're trying to outbeat the market as an individual investor that's not spending all their time trying to figure out where the dips are that's usually a problem. So most of the time, oftentimes for individual investors, you might use a strategy like this, except investing per pay check, uh, for example. And that means you're, you're investing at the, at the peaks possibly, but you're also investing at the troughs. So you're, you're probably gonna be averaging out over the long run because you're not looking to make the gains on the short-term peaks and troughs, but rather you're trying to be a long-term investor and saying, I'm gonna take advantage, I'm gonna hit the peaks and the troughs because I'm investing as a standard kind of uh, method and I'm a long-term investor. That would be kind of the general idea. Now you could come up with a, some more complex methods to, to invest in if you, if you wanted to and try to figure out, uh, you know, try to invest with more when the, when the stock is basically going down and use some different strategies that we might take a look at in future presentations uh, to apply uh, there, but that's the general idea. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna select these. We're gonna go to the home tab, font group, border, and blue. So let's think about what the average cost per share is then. So let's make another skinny column over here. I'm gonna make a skinny K by going to the skinny F, home tab, and paintbrush to the skinny K. And we'll call this the average cost per share average cost per share. I'm going to make this a little bit wider. And then we've got the total investment. So the total investment we made over the four periods, four years in this case, is the 28. So I'm going to say this equals the 28. That's how much money we put in. Let's make the header. We're getting ahead of yourself. You're getting ahead of yourself. Slow down so you can catch up to yourself. I'm going to go to the home tab font group and make this black and white. And then the total number of shares is going to be here. So this is the total number we have after the four year time frame. Let's make this a little bit wider and let's put an underline home tab font group underline. So that means the average cost per share is equal to the 28,000 divided by the, the 390 about and we could add some decimals maybe on these two. So there we so there we have it. So you could see the fluctuation in the price after the four year time frame. The average cost is at the uh, 70, the 71, 85. And again, as more time passes, you would think if you're investing over like 30 years or something like that, we're hoping the trend in the market is an upward tr trend. And then we're gonna see these peaks and troughs when we look and zoom in on the market, which people, you know, it's inevitable you're gonna do that and then, then stress yourself out on the, on the peaks and troughs. But usually for many investors that are using a kind of a fixed strategy of investing for retirement, for example, they're, they're trying to be a long-term investor and they might simply be causing themselves stress if they create a strategy and then agonize over it every time there's a peak or the market fluctuates, you know. But in any case, we're then gonna make this, we're gonna make this, that's that's part of investing. So whatever, gotta agonize over every, every move. But you don't really have to, but in any case, let's go ahead and review. Let's check this out. So there we have it, spelling, spelling looks good. Let's put an underline here, home tab and underline. So that's the general idea. So we're gonna have the same investment will will result in us buying different number of shares per time frame of the investment based on the market price and if you just put a fixed amount in per interval then you will be on the short term buying at the peaks and the troughs uh, but but hopefully you won't pass up a good time to buy even though you might hit some bad times to buy and you're looking for that long run trend 
uh, typically. 